Okay, here we have an example of how you can use motion analysis software to uh, do bike fits, specifically in this case a uh, triathlon bike fit. Here we have an uh, elite amateur uh, winner of 2007 Ironman Florida, excellent position. Um, it's a position that's proved itself over, over many races. We can see some of the characteristics of this position, obviously she's got a very flat torso, um, arms vertical supporting the torso, there's no tension across the back. Um, these are the kind of things we look for, but there are a lot of uh, more subtle issues we need to deal with when setting up someone like this to make sure that the uh, position is optimal, starting with something as basic as the knee angle, which is all important for um, best power generation possible. Here um, we see that she's got a knee angle right where, right in the range where we want to see it. And um, this is something that, that you know, theoretically you can set up by using uh, NC measurements and stuff like that, but I've seen many, many riders set up with measuring devices and uh, they're way off on the knee angle for various um, reasons. Uh, maybe they have big or small feet or, or or it happens to be the way that they uh, pedal, the way they flex their ankles while pedaling, um, their knee angle can be way off if they're simply measured with a measuring device for uh, inseam length. Um, then we can get into some more um, specific things for a, for a time trial fit. Uh, one very important aspect is uh, hip angle. We want to check that and make sure that that is um, in the acceptable range. If that gets too tight, uh, there's definitely going to be a loss of power. And um, this is a good hip angle. It's, it's on the aggressive side, but it's still uh, a, a very usable angle, um, something that's very important to check. As I mentioned, um, we have the upper arms essentially vertical, supporting the weight of the rider. The rider's back is suspended skeletally between the arms and the hips. There's no tension across the back. We don't see extreme rounding on the back. The rider can allow the torso to rest comfortably and generate uh, a lot of power. Now let's say this rider wanted to uh, try lowering their front end to see if they could get more arrow. Um, this is something that, that you'll see um, many triathletes or time trialists do. They'll They'll adjust one thing. Well, the problem with do, with adjusting one of the uh, factors is that it affects everything else. And if you don't have a way of checking that, then then you're really kind of fishing around in the dark. So the rider now is going to, to simulate lowering the front end. She's taking her arms off the arm pads, putting them down on the base bar, and now she's dropped down uh, a few centimeters lower on the front end, and. Um, her shoulders may be lower, but there's a uh, bunch of issues here now with her position. She's basically thrown her position uh, off completely. Uh, the hip angle, one thing we mentioned, is, is certainly going to be tightened up, and it's, it's now at a, at a level that is that most people can't ride at and generate uh, very good power. There's a there's a couple of uh, angles we'll be we'll be looking at when we do this. Um, and so we see a situation where she's likely lost some power. Uh, is, is the increase in aerodynamics worth it? Well, you'd be able to find that out on the road. She's also going to definitely have some uh, comfort issues here. Um, one thing we can look at, I can compare the um, angles uh, of the lower back and the upper back here and get an idea of um, how much strain we're getting across the back. You can see that um, her back is uh, very rounded, and this is definitely going to lead to some back strain in this position. So this is where you often hear people saying, well, geez, I can't lower my front end because it's, it's going to hurt my back. It's going to be uncomfortable. I can't ride that way. Well, this would be an example of um, a uh, position like that. However, um, there are definite solutions to it. Um, she absolutely could ride uh, this way if we tweak some things. You'll notice that another issue here is that now um, her 
arm angle, her upper arm angle relative to her torso has um, opened up. Don't like to see that. Uh, this is going to lead to additional source of tension in the back uh, and across the shoulders. Um, we definitely uh, don't want to see that. Now what we could do is uh, we could adjust the rider forward and here we're going to actually morph her forward here in this video and um, now she's maintained the same lowness in the front but we have a uh, change of angles because she has shifted forward so she has essentially opened up her hip angle more to a uh, angle that might be rideable um, and we notice that the forearm angle uh, looks much better. We've got it back to a, a, almost a vertical type setting. Also, the arch in the back is largely gone uh, so that the back would be much more relaxed. So this is just a, a quick example of some of the measures we can do with motion analysis. And, and these are things that would be very tough to look at um, from any other any other methodology. Um, so this especially for time trial and triathlon fitting is a very uh, powerful method.